the uh, the type the, the type of entry uh, which is called special permit for immediate delivery special permit for immediate delivery we came across this already before we know for example that uh, the special permit is filled out on CBP form 3461 and that it is when the merchandise is the special permit for immediate delivery is used the merchandise is still in the customs custody which means that because it is in customs custody it is not regarded as entered even though you use cbp form 3461 now because it is not entered that means the duty rates from the time you bring it into the country they are still not applicable until you file 7501 that's pretty much the tenant now we we're going to talk about more deeper on the topic of how to view the special permit uh, for immediate delivery for the customs broker exam perspective and how customs examiners how they like you to test you on the topic and the one way i suggest to look at it is to look at the type of situation so the situation such as uh, you bring the merchandise you bring in the merchandise uh, and you have to ask yourself a question the question dealing with geography and the question dealing with the type of merchandise it is and depending on the situation you may or may not be eligible for this permit so the customs examiners they like to ask you questions about they give you the fact pattern and they say can you file a special permit for immediate delivery? Or they give you the fact pattern and they say, what can you, the client comes in, what can you do for your client? And special permit for immediate delivery is one example of, uh, is one of the answer choices listed. So one situation uh, which, for which special permit of immediate delivery is applicable is contiguous countries. Contiguous countries what are the contiguous countries? We know two, right? One of them is Canada, another one is Mexico. So if it comes from by land from Canada or Mexico, you can do it. It doesn't matter what you bring in. You can bring in VCRs, you can bring in DVDs, you can bring in computers, you can bring in potato chips. If, if it comes from Canada or Mexico, you can file a special permit for immediate delivery. The next, the next situation has to do with the type of merchandise you are bringing in and this one concerns fruits and vegetables fruits and vegetables they don't have to come from contiguous countries they don't have to come from Mexico they don't have to come from Canada all you need to do is to have fresh fruits and vegetables what would be the opposite of fresh fruits and vegetables well preserved or dried fruits and vegetables they would not be eligible but if it is fresh you can bring it in uh, and it doesn't have to be contiguous country it can be Chile it can be Australia it can be any country you, you pick so long as you have that type of merchandise notice uh, that um, if the application is made for Mexico and application is approved by the port director you can you, you can take it to your warehouse and then because it usually if it's a border it comes on truck you can do it in a vehicle in which it crossed the border so if it's a Canadian driver it can be Canadian driver who brings it in sometimes it can be uh, you can change the I don't know you can change the truck but if you change the truck uh, it must be necessary unlike the previous one a continuous bond is required so for 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 example for contiguous countries you have to file just a bond right it can be single entry bond notice for the fresh fruits and vegetables you have to have continuous bond what does that mean that means 
what what's the floor for the continuous bond it is fifty thousand dollars that's correct yes fifty thousand so that means you have to have substantial volume to qualify for this if you have small amounts it's not good notice that the portions without commercial value such as the rotten the those that went bad they can be disposed so you don't uh, you don't have to enter for consumption those that are f those fr fresh frozen vegetables that have that have grown moldy for example or that have grown mm, that, that that became rot and after you and notice you don't have to enter them for consumption only you can do the immediate transportation too and immediate transportation meaning that if you if you come to the port of Nuevo Laredo let's say in Texas or El Paso Texas you can take them to New York and clear them in New York all right and uh, even you can do the transportation exportation so let's say you have stuff going to Canada through the United States from Mexico that would be one example so so two situations we talked about is fresh frozen vegetables okay for special permit for immediate delivery contiguous countries okay the next one is the government entries government of the United States can also import things and uh, they in fact they do this all the time so you have shipments for United States Department of Agriculture because they support some research project or you have a shipment that uh, comes for Food and Drug Administration such as an equipment uh, you have uh, US government uh, uh, consumes a lot of things so it needs to bring a lot of things notice unlike the previous two no bond is required for the US government and it's just a formality the there must be stipulation means it's agreement I agree to do this so the formality is there uh, and uh, they say I am representative because it should be a representative of the US government usually a person like FDA agent or USDA inspector or something like that that says I will uh, uh, I agree to do this and that now notice US government so what if it is a state department of agriculture can this be good or what if it's a New York City department of agriculture is that can they do this uh, special permit for immediate delivery without bond probably not no because it's only for United States it must be federal government if it's a state government or it's a local government such as government of the New York City Michael Bloomberg for example administration bring something in no because unlike federal government local governments have to pay duties too yeah yeah yes yes uh, it's the state government is not exempt from duties the federal government is trade fair article so you bring something in to advertise uh, whatever you have that can also be done for the under the special permit for immediate delivery notice we came across trade fair several times one one time uh, we uh, came as an example of temporary importation under bond which we haven't covered that much but it's one way another way is to do it under carnia which carnia let me see Carne. 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 it's a document which serves as both entry and a bond and it is usually used for articles which are brought in into the country temporarily and then thereafter they will leave the country it's a uh, document pers made pursuant to the international agreement and the United States is a party to that agreement another one 
tariff rate quotas. Can you can you bring the quota class merchandise to the United States under the special permit for immediate delivery? And we know that you can. Of course, you have to file a bond. And there is a point on incremental release. We talked about the incremental release um, when we talked about the entry types. We know that merchandise can be released incrementally or under incremental release procedure or hold all procedure, meaning that if you have a split shipment, let's say, or shipment which like offshore oil rig, which comes in, in parts because it's so huge, then you can you have two choices. You can either release parts incrementally or you can wait until everything arrives and then release uh, file for release. Now, in the case of incremental release, uh, you, you can do that. Uh, I'm sorry, you, ca you cannot do that. So if you have things that ca coming in, you have to wait for the whole shipment to arrive. Of course, what does it tell you? This means that you can, instead of shipping the whole thing, you can maybe uh, ship in uh, smaller increments which the smaller increment would constitute the whole shipment. But if you opt for huge shipment of the quota class merchandise, which, and you ask for incremental release, no, you have to wait for the whole thing to arrive. Next. R remember the 10 working days rule? Uh, from the time of the entry of the first part of merchandise, it has to be, you, ha you can only wait 10 days. If 10, if, it's, if 10 days is passed, you have to file the separate entry. And also within the quota first period, whichever expires first. Why is that? Because if you have quota, which is expired, then this is no longer useful. Why? Because the merchandise is within a customs custody, remember? You haven't made an entry yet. So the duties and the rate of duties, they start from the time you, for the quota class merchandise, from the time you file CBP 7501 with duties, right? Here you're filing what? You're filing 3461 and 34 the duties do not begin to apply, not yet at least. So that means that you have to ask yourself on the customs exam, is it the expiration of the quota period or is it 10 working days? And if this comes first, then you apply higher duty rate for that portion of the shipment. And of course, if you wait too long and the quota period is expired, of course, we're talking about the tariff rate quotas, then you pay at the over the quota rate. You pay higher duty rate amount. Now, that was tariff rate quotas. What about the absolute quotas? Can you do that? Well, yes, you can. But there is a caveat to it. The merchandise must be perishable. What does it mean? It means that it cannot be a mm, dry sugar, for example. Dry sugar usually doesn't go bad. But if you have something like uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, which are subject to quota, then you, uh, you can make a perishable argument and you can, you can apply for the incremental release. There is a problem though. If it is released, uh, I'm sorry, you can apply for the, uh, for the special permit for immediate delivery release. What's the problem with that? You have, why do you have a special problem with that? Because if you have a quota, tariff rate quota, you can always pay higher duty and make things okay. With absolute quota, you already allowed, let's say this is a border, you already allowed the merchandise to be in the country and that merchandise once it's inside the country from the time you file 7501 
those are the rates that are applicable, right? This is a tariff rate quota. With absolute quotas, this is, there is no such thing. With absolute quotas, you can only, you can only, you either can or cannot bring the stuff in. So once the absolute quota expired, but you already have stuff in, you have a problem, right? You can no, no longer have an option of paying a higher duty rate. All you can do is take stuff out, destroy it, or take it in the warehouse. Take stuff out meaning take it out of the country. Those are your options. Or take it to the foreign trade zone, which is also technically outside of customs territory of the United States. And no incremental release. It's a must. And the entry summary, 10 working days, all within the quarter period. So if quarter period for absolute rate quarter comes on the ninth day, it must be on the day nine, not on the day 10. If it's quarter period stops, is, is getting filled on day 11, then it's day 10, whichever is first. Everyone follows? Now, those are your options, of course, which I just mentioned, warehouse, exportation or destruction, if you're out of luck if the quota period has been filled. Split shipments is another, is another uh, term. Remember the split shipment requirement. What is it? Split shipment is when you have a carrier at its own initiative make, instead of two containers on one vessel, they decided to load uh, two containers, which is one shipment, on two different vessels. And they arrived, let's say, at different times, at the same port, or even at the different ports. So what do you do? Well, one, w one way of making things right is to file a special permit for immediate delivery. So if you have a split shipment, special permit for immediate delivery is OK. Unassembled or disassembled uh, things. Um, remember, I'm, I was talking about the big things like offshore oil rig platforms, which are so huge they cannot possibly be bro brought in at, uh, at one time. Those are also can be, because it's disassembled, let's say you, you have a stuff coming in from Korea to Houston through Los Angeles. It's so huge it cannot come in at, at one time. It comes in in parts and becomes assembled at Houston, Texas. In that situation, because of the size of nature, you cannot uh, bring it in at once. What you do is you take it to Texas under the special permit for immediate delivery. What's your other option? Your other option is to do the immediate transportation. What's the difference? <laughs> when does it become important? I mean, I'm talking about this, but really, why would, you, why would you care, right? Why you have all this stuff? Why would you care? So one, one, one reason you would care is the rate of duty. So this is my bad map of the USOA. This is USA. So this is Texas, right? Let's say this is Houston, Texas. And this is California, Los Angeles. The stuff comes in. It's big. It's an offshore oil rig platform, right? And it's disassembled. It comes in parts. So let's say it comes in part shipment one, shipment two, let's say shipment three, must be within 10, 10 business days, right? But if you file the immediate transportation entry, the duty rates that are applicable will be the duty rates that you file the immediate transportation here in Los Angeles. But if you file the special permit for immediate delivery, the duty rates that are applicable will be the duty rates that will be when you file 7501 here. In other words, you file 7501 for both eventually. But if you file immediate transportation entry, 
this duty rates that you will apply in 7501 